Today we're showing you how to make an exploded drawing that you can use for all of your projects. Big shout out to all of the Year 8 students from Cranbrook in Sydney. This is Project Light It Up. It's a rethink of the classic pencil case, but with an acrylic lid, laser cut, we're using it as a night light. I'm Glenny D. Let's get started. We'll begin very simply by drawing flat planes, isometric planes. Then we'll add some thickness, and after that, some design detail and annotation. Remember this is quick sketching. If you don't have a splat, it's fine. Just guess the angles and follow along. Download the drawing template, or pick a starting point on blank paper, and trace around these three edges. From the blip down. So those lines are all the same length. Let's slide up and draw one more at the top. Great, so that is my flat plane. It's facing to the left. Cool, now we're going to repeat that, but we're sliding out a bit. Watch this. I'm sliding the splat on my pencil in that direction. You could slide on a ruler if you wanted to, but I'm counting two lengths. That's three lengths of the splat to that point. I'm gonna go one more. Now I'm in that position, I'm tracing just like we did before, those three edges. Slide up. And what I have now is two planes that are parallel. All right, so notice that each edge of the splat is exactly the same length. It really doesn't matter which I use. If I say, come up one length from that point, let's just go to the blip. Make a dot or mark right on the blip. And from that point, let's go up one splat length and make a mark. Same from there. And one more at the back. Great, so those four points, I'm going to use a rule and connect them. So I'm carefully joining the dots. Those are my isometric lines. Great. Uh, now I'm going to come down one splat length from each of those four places. This time I'm going from the blip down to the corner of the splat. So now I've got my four points, just like before. Let's connect those up. You'll probably notice your drawing isn't looking exactly like mine, and that is totally fine. Remember these are quick drawings to show the parts exploded, that's all. Now we add some thickness to those flat planes. Hold your splat straight up and down. Have a look at those three points. Holding your pencil on one point, line up the splat and draw a line, say five or six millimeters. Try to make these lines all the same length, now we're going to copy that line, the angle of that line, which is vertical, but we're going to draw it over there. We're copying that exact line, but we're drawing it over there. Great. I'm thinking that corner lines up with that corner. So when we add some thickness, we're going to need to thicken it in that direction. So let's erase two lines. And now from these three points, I'm going to draw a short line, five or six millimeters in that direction. That's about half the scale. The real thickness of the wood is more like 12. Copying that line. Coming forwards, great. Copy that line but we're sliding forwards. Notice I'm sliding the splat on my pencil. I find that a little easier. And we're missing two lines. So if I place the splat on that original position and simply trace around those two edges, boom. Oops, small error, that's okay. I'm erasing that little corner because we're adding some thickness to the top. From those three points, drop a short line down, say five or six millimeters, now the top has some thickness. Let's add some thickness to the base. Three points, drop your line down, connect up. 
Awesome. Have a look at these two points. We're going to place the tip of the splat on those and I'm going half a splat length, not a full length, just a half. Let's do the same thing from the other point. Half a splat length out to the left. Now connect those two dots using a rule. Break your line, hop over that component because this line is behind. Now we need to go upwards one splat length. I'm not drawing the line just yet. Some of it will be behind. So just come up and at the blip, place a dot. Let's do the same thing from this point. I could use the center to mark that distance. Remember they're all the same length. Now when I'm connecting, some is hidden. So only draw the line, stop when you get to that edge. Same thing when we come up, I'm going to break the line there. At the front, we'll see the full edge. Okay, so that is the back exploded backwards. I'm adding some thickness. If this back is um, maybe three millimeter ply or MDF, then we're going to halve that and draw it as one and a half, we'll say two millimeters. I'm using a dot dash line to show how the corners are going to line up, how it comes together. All right, for the more confident drawers, let's have a go at adding a timber joint. This is going to be a rebate joint. So I'm simply going halfway into that timber, or a third, depending on what your teacher thinks, and I'm coming backwards my five or six millimeters. Now I'm drawing an isometric line down. So that is the timber that I would cut away. I'm going to need to bounce a new edge around the corner there. Try and get it halfway if you can. Okay, so that leaves me with a little bit of material to erase. So let's rub those lines out. I'm just going to rub it completely out and then redraw it. So I've got an isometric line to the right and down. One little bit there to add in. All right, so that is my rebate joint. Now on the bottom, I'm going to do something very similar. Let's come down halfway. Let's come backwards, however thick my material is. So in this case, we're using a six mil line and then up. Now at the front, I'm going to see a line that goes all the way along there. And one more line to add there. Cool, so I'll erase that and then redraw it. So I'm taking away that line. Good. If yours aren't super accurate, we're going to draw a more close-up detail of this in just a minute. Why do we need to make the left-hand piece longer than the right? Well, simply, the left-hand piece needs to extend into to fill those rebate joints. And we could redraw it um, longer above and below, but it's going to be simple to leave the top the same and just extend the bottom down by double the five or six mils. So let's say 10 millimeters. So redraw it 10 millimeters longer. Excellent. It can be a little hard to see uh, exactly what's going on here. So let's label it detail A and do a closer up version. This will be a scale one to one. So 12 millimeters thick, I draw a base and there's my left hand side. I'm extending the left hand side down into the base. Remember that uh, it's a rebate joint. The different angles there make sure that it looks like two different components that are fitting together. So let's label that as detail A. We're adding some more uh, design detail here. I'm thinking that um, the front will need a groove 
to slide into. So I'm doing that. I'm just freehanding that, which in the end, it's great to be able to just um, freehand up your, your concepts. I'm now thinking of a starting point right there. And that will be the front of the acrylic piece that's going to slide in. Let's draw a line at the isometric angle, one at the top. I'm going to extend that backwards, but I'm not going to have room to draw that whole piece. So I'm going to add a break line. So come down, add a wiggle, continue down. That means there's more of it, but it's pretty much the same shape. You don't need to see it all. Add your, come back say two millimeters, and notice I'm freehanding. Have a go at freehanding. Even if your lines are a little wobbly, you can always fix them up later by tracing over them. Um, so let's label that one the front. And we'll talk more later about how your ideas uh, might look for what you do with that piece of acrylic. Remember, it's meant to have some light shine through it. Okay, so I'm thinking I could slide it in from that direction. Let's add um, a little, the end of the groove there. And I could add a groove in this piece and just slide the um, acrylic down like that. But I think what I'll do is slide it in from this direction, which means I'll probably have to shorten the right hand side one. Anyway, let's imagine cutting through there and looking at the piece at where it joins. And we'll call this one detail B. Let's add a new detail. That's the groove in the base. Drawing the piece of acrylic in the groove, break line at the top. Hatching means that I'm imagining that I've cut through halfway along the piece. It's called a section. And I can add my measurements or dimensions onto these kinds of details. And I could draw it at a larger scale. This one is real size or one to one. Here I'm drawing uh, something that I could use to represent an LED strip. And of course, you'll change it to suit whatever design concept that you're thinking of. But for now, let's just go with an object that looks something like that with four LEDs. One option could be to mount it to the back piece. Let's try and think of a few other options. If I wanted the LEDs to look a little brighter, then I could draw that piece forwards a little bit. So let's draw it there and then come up with some idea to attach it to the back piece. Some people might be using a UNO or some other microcontroller, in which case we could have the LED attached directly to that. Here's the key to becoming a more creative designer. Try to think of three options of doing things. For instance, when we're joining the left-hand side to the base, we used a rebate joint, but how else could we do it? Well, we could use a simple butt joint or we could use a mitre joint. Can we think of three ways to join the back onto the base? Well, one way, for instance, might be to simply use some little sticks glued each side of the plywood at the back. Maybe you could think of a few more ideas. What about getting the cable through the back piece? We could use, um, we could drill a hole, we could make a slot, or we could use a rubber grommet. The first thing people will see on your design is the front piece, so it's got to be quality. What about we use MDF as the front and we laser cut letter shapes out. Then with some acrylic uh, letters exactly the same shape, we can glue those in. Maybe try to think of three creative ideas. If you'd like to present one of your drawings a little tidier, then here's an idea. Stick your drawing up onto a window and then stick another blank sheet over the top. I've used a bleed proof paper simply because I'm going to use marker on it. But if you're using pencil, any uh, paper is fine. So trace off your drawing and you can tidy it up. Now I've used freehand uh, when I've traced this one. Now it's okay that the lines are a little wobbly. The most important thing is just keep going with one line. Don't scratch lots of lines along. Just commit to drawing the one line. 
I've I've thickened up some of the lines simply using um, a two dollar set of uh, markers or textures. That I think I found in Kmart or Officeworks. Uh, then I have um, picked one side that would be in shadow, and I've used a brown marker. I picked up some cheap markers and I've used the brown one that matched fairly closely to a Micador brown soft pastel. So I've just simply wiped a little bit on using my finger at the very back and using an eraser I've tidied that up and I think the result is, is fairly good. Thanks very much. I've had a great time drawing with you. Good luck sketching up all of your design concepts and I would love to see some of the results. Thanks again to Cranbrook to the year eights and all the TAS staff. I'll see you again soon. I'm Glennie D and bye for now.